good day to you and welcome to another Paddock's Club tutorial. Today we're going to look at a question Corinne could see asked, am I right in stating that there is nothing stopping trustees meeting via telephone or video conferencing? Well, let's have a look. What do the rules require in so far as this is concerned? Do they require a physical meeting? Let's look at Prescribed Management Rule 15 sub 1. The trustees may give notice, convening meetings, meet together for the dispatch of business, adjourn and otherwise regulate their meetings as they think fit. As they think fit, well, that gives them a fair amount of freedom. It also says it shall not be necessary to give notice of a meeting from, uh, of trustees to any trustee who for the time being is absent from the Republic, but notice of such meeting shall be given to his alternate. So the, this basic provision, which has been much the same since the 1970s, uh, doesn't specifically require that, that the trustees get together for a meeting, but they do imply it because any person who's outside of the Republic um, doesn't have to be given um, a, a notice. So that there is a, a, a clear implication. I suggest that in every case you check your rules. PMR 15 probably applies to almost all schemes, nevertheless best to make sure. So what is the short answer to Corinne's question? Well, as long as the scheme's rules don't specifically require a physical presence together, yes, you are correct. Meetings can be held remotely. But it is important to note that all the same common law and rule-based provisions apply as they would to a physical meeting. And what are these issues? I'll take you through them quickly, but there are seven. Identity of the participants, notice of the meeting, entitlement to attend, the quorum requirement, the ability to interact, capacity to participate, and voting. The identity of the participants first. The chairman must obviously be satisfied as to the identity of the persons participating and that they have the right to do so. Now bear in mind that this might be a trustee meeting where some people are on the phone, some people are on uh, a, a video or chat room, something like Skype, a virtual meeting room perhaps on the web. Um, also bear in mind that you might have mixed attendance. You could have a group of, uh, of some of the trustees in a room um, with a conference telephone and others remote on their telephones. So the, the, the process that the trustees go through to make sure might in fact be different for the various participants. Um, notice of the meeting or notice must be given to all persons entitled to attend and any trustees outside of the Republic must also be given notice. Why do I say that? Because it's quite clear that it was on the basis that of expecting trustees to get together physically that, uh, that um, you don't have to give uh, trustees outside the Republic notice. If they can phone in or they can come in via the internet then there's no reason for that. Um, and it may make sense also to adjust the rules of the scheme to allow electronic notice where this is appropriate. Um, let's look at the entitlement to attend. Only trustees, owners, registered mortgages, that's bondholders, and other persons that the meeting agree um, are entitled to be there must be present. Of course, you can't know who is next to somebody who's on the telephone or in the same room as somebody on a video. Um, but you must avoid outside interference as far as possible. That's the duty of the chairperson. The normal quorum rules apply and under PMR 16 that will be 50% of the trustees um, it must actually be there, all having been given notice. The ability to interact, well the very nature of a meeting requires interactivity. Otherwise, where no interactivity is required, the round-robin procedure is more appropriate. All persons participating must be able to communicate concurrently at the same time without an intermediary and to participate reasonably effectively. That is, they must be able to influence others and be influenced before they make a final decision, all under the control of the chairperson. And as far as the capacity to participate is concerned, all those entitled to attend must, from a practical perspective, and that includes costs, location, technical capacity, etc., be capable of participating in the meeting. You can't say we'll do that, even though Joe, um, the, the, the one chair, uh, the one trustee, um, you know, we'll have it on the web even though he doesn't have the internet. You can't do that. You can't make it difficult for a non-techie person, a non-techie trustee or other person entitled to participate to attend. The voting must be properly controlled and recorded, Best, I think, in most cases to say it out aloud. There's no obvious opportunity for balloting in these circumstances. That is secret voting. That's better kept for meetings. So thank you very much for, um, for being part of this Paddock's Club tutorial. I hope you find it useful. Let's discuss it further in the forum.